Okay, welcome everyone, and thank you for joining our webinar to dive deep into the world of cloud databases. My name is Tatiana Fedorinchik, Director of Global Product Marketing at Virtuoso. And before moving to our topic, I just want to mention that we are open to all your questions. So please don't hesitate to go to the questions tab or to the chat during our conversation. And we will try to answer all those questions at the end of our session. Today, we will go through the strategies, tools, and insights uh, needed to run your databases in the cloud, as well as embrace the complexity of multi-cloud database management to drive your projects towards uh, a more resilient and future-ready state. And the expert who will lead us through all these specifics today is Paul Bruni, Director of Sales Engineering at Virtuoso. Welcome, Paul. Thank you very much, Tatiana. Um, and uh, a big welcome to everybody joining us for this webinar. So uh, as Tatiana has introduced, uh, we'll be talking about uh, database management, um, specifically in the cloud, and where we as Virtuoso can offer some particular um, uh, benefits and support in, in helping you deploy and manage across multiple clouds. There's a brief agenda here. As Tatiana says, we welcome all of your uh, Q&A. And we've got a session uh, toward the end of this. I'm going to go through some slides and then a quick demo to actually show you a platform. Uh, and then we'll go to um, Q&A. So without um, further ado, let's, uh, let's carry on. Let's make a start. So first of all, um, the discussion mentioned databases and cloud in the same sentence, in the same breath. And what we're seeing, and there's a report or a, a, a graph here from Gartner, is that databases keep moving to the cloud. And you can see that this chart uh, projects revenue from 2022 last year and then up to uh, 2025. The overall um, DBMS market is growing, database management system market is growing, and it grew by 14.4% in 2022. But what we are seeing is that a lot of those database deployments are actually going into the cloud as opposed to on-premise. And the rate at which they're going into the cloud is increasing at a faster rate than on-premise. So that is really, um, I suppose, a focal point for this discussion today. Now, I think at this point, we're going to run a quick poll. So I'll hand back to you, Tatiana. Yeah, the tendency of migration of the cloud keeps growing. And uh, that would be really good to figure out your reasons behind this migration, whether you already migrated to the cloud, your databases, or you're just considering to do that, please choose uh, what are the reasons behind this decision for you. So maintain high availability, reduce costs, modernize your existing applications, or maybe move to software as a service model. Uh, also increase data accessibility, support the efforts to become cloud native or store transactional data, as well as maybe close the gap in the workforce. For instance, either you're lacking skills or employees who can manage those databases. So what are those reasons behind? That would be good. Like, let's just a moment for you to respond. I see that we're already getting the responses. In a moment, I will end the poll and show you the results. Okay, I'm ending the poll. Thank you for the responses. And let's see the results. We see that the majority decided that maintain high availability is priority number one uh, in these terms. And uh, that's a good thing because today we are going to talk about high availability for the databases, not only on the uh, level of databases, but also on the level of infrastructure and on the level of different regions. Reduce costs. Yes, we never lack of these uh, questions. Like everyone wants to pay less and have a good performance at the same time. So that's a good demand. Um, modernize existing applications around 17%, same as moving to software as a service model. And also increase data accessibility. That's a good point. And for sure, some percentage still wants to close the gap for workforce. So that's that's per perfect. Yeah, today we are going to cover uh, some of those uh, uh, directions, and Paul will share how we can help you with these uh, uh, requirements. Paul? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tatiana. Again, it's really interesting getting feedback from 
from from you know the audience from from people viewing this just to get a real sense of i think realism as well so this is this is interesting thank thank you very much there's a couple of reasons um and, and i put these together in the next slides that um we hear from uh, organizations we talk to uh in terms of why and how they are considering cloud to run their uh, database systems and one is innovation um moving into a cloud environment is often seen as well. We look into innovate, and uh, the cloud gives us this. You know, there's so many other areas that a lot of organisations are looking at using cloud for. So innovation is is you know is very is very much one that people see that we're looking to um, to innovate and change our process and change our thinking to potentially develop new new apps, new services, and so on and so forth. So innovation is definitely there. Security crops up time and time again, and we need to be really careful about this. You know, legacy databases were not always designed with security in mind. They were really designed with focus on data availability and accessibility, which is one of the points that came out of the poll, which is interesting. Uh, but security around cloud services is of paramount importance. And there is a growing swathe of people that believe now looking at the cloud for deployment actually will give a more secure operation. Again, it's interesting. Everybody's experience is different, but security is definitely up there. Cost efficiency, um, swift deployment, swift provisioning, management, accelerated time to market, all of those are general reasons why people look to use the cloud, you know, some of the many reasons why people look to use cloud-based services. But, but cost efficiency is there. Together, when we look at things like automation and the operational overheads, operational management, it really does come into uh, its own there. And we're going to look at a couple of um, factors that we can, uh, we can specifically home in on uh, later on. Cloud offers, in theory, limitless scalability. It's not necessarily limitless, but the fact that you're not having to focus on provisioning physical hardware yourselves, uh, looking to deploy into a cloud, well, the cloud service supplier actually has that uh, challenge themselves. You're, you can just focus on consuming the resource for the database service itself. Scalability, big, big one. Um, reduce lock-in. Um, as opposed to, uh, you know, kind of vendor lock-in. I mean, this one's an interesting point. You might agree, you might disagree with that. But when we talk about operating across multi-clouds, and this is where we're actually looking to explore this, um, develop this conversation, that's when avoiding lock-in actually becomes quite an interesting proposition as well. Uh, and also now, migrations to the cloud, I'm going to suggest it's quite mature. AWS first brought their cloud offering to market in um, 2006, 2007. I'm sure people can correct me if I get that date wrong. But these days, we consider that migrating into the cloud is a um, uses mature processes. have been tried and tested over many, many times. So um, it's not something new that we should be, we should view that as a barrier at all, because there's lots of tools, there's whole organizations out there that um, whose primary focus is on supporting you know, migrations and mobility of, of content from typically on-prem to cloud or cloud to cloud and so on. Uh, we're going to touch on some of those aspects later on as well. Um, if we look at um, reports about cloud adoption and specifically, well, how many clouds? I mean, I read a report recently that I think they said the average uh, mid-sized enterprise is using 3.8 clouds. Okay, what does that mean exactly? Because cloud, cloud means slightly like different things to different people. Uh, a lot of people probably uh, here use Flexera or a reference Flexera because I published this, this report uh, year on year, state of the cloud. And they're basically saying that um, out of all the organizations they polled in this particular poll, 87% use multi-cloud, use more than one cloud. But out of those, 72% are using hybrid clouds. Now, that is interesting in terms of what exactly, you know, is a hybrid cloud. But we're talking about a mixture of public and private together. Every organization is different. Every org will use cloud services relative to what their needs are and their focuses. But again, we look at this, the poll from Flexera, we've got a high proportion of multi-cloud users that are operating across private and public. Uh, they may well be operating on-premise hyperscalers. Okay, we don't know exactly what the mix is, but this is giving us information about a trend about how clouds are being used. Now, there's some more information from Flexera, and again, the report is a, is a, is a very wide-ranging, it's a very large report, but there's a couple of key reasons why organizations are using multiple, multiple clouds, multiple cloud architectures. One is applications, um, or the main one here, applications are siloed on different clouds. So applications being developed, being deployed, whatever, 
sort of tied or semi-tied to a particular cloud. But then other applications have been developed, have been deployed, have been siloed on other clouds. So organizations have actually grown um, either by choice or simply by um, um, the size and multiple departments, et cetera, just choosing to use multiple clouds. And organizations, um, uh, um, service delivery mechanisms have grown up that way. There's obviously DR and failover between clouds is another key use. So that mobility I mentioned earlier, being able to move content from one cloud, one, one environment to another environment, is actually really key. Um, that's kind of tied in what I call workload mobility and DR failover kind of related, but it's all about mobility and movement and being able to actually store content in multiple locations. Data integration and so on, I'm not going to go through all of these, but there's lots of reasons and Flexera is very interesting um, read as well, just so, um, you know, just to understand what is actually happening out there, you know, in the world. So, um, there are pros and cons of moving to the cloud, moving and adopting multi-cloud. And we take a lot of this information from, from Gartner. Um, other industry watchers are available, of course, but just at a high level in terms of generally. Uh, the pros are um, you get access to more um, obviously locations, but also technology capabilities. So I'm talking about multi-cloud here. And we're not just talking about the AWSs of the world. We know that they've got a vast swathe of services, but Azure have as well, slightly different. GCP have, DigitalOcean, OVH, there's lots and lots of choices out there. Um, but it gives people access to more of these. And it can also, by the same token, reduce risks, you know, vendor concentration, vendor viability, so you don't have all your eggs in one basket, of course, even down to negotiation leverage as well. So there's lots of reasons why we can actually reduce potential risk by using the multi-cloud. But then we've got the cons, and they're at the bottom in grey. It increases overall complexity related to overall management and governance. And from what I've seen working with cloud services over quite a few years now, that's been a major barrier um, because a lot of these clouds were developed with their own proprietary uh, uh, interfaces and so on, and they didn't talk with each other because they didn't want to do any of that sharing. The world has evolved, it's developed, it's moved on, it's matured a lot. And so being able to um, implement um, tools for better management and cross-cloud you know, management governments are now, are now here and now much more of a reality. But it's still a consideration, data dispersion, and we work with customers all around the globe and where you have sort of data sovereignty challenges as well. You know, these are all considerations in terms of the cons. Um, multiple vendor relationships that as an organization you have to maintain. Well, yeah, okay. Um, the actual fact of integration, because uh, does one service talk in the exactly same language as another service? It's, it, it gives us interesting uh, challenges here. And then also our, our workforces, um, do they need additional training? Are they skilled and so on and so forth? Lots of considerations, but there's lots of benefits to exploring this. And as we saw on that very first chart, there's a rise, there's a move, there's a growth in organization move, moving to the cloud. So we deduce the pros outweigh all the cons here as well. So one of the um, solutions that we have that we can talk about in this context of operating uh, databases across multiple clouds is what we call virtualized application platform. And it's really, it's a turnkey as solution, platform as a service solution that can help with automation, scaling, clustering, updates of applications, whether these are traditional applications or database services. It supports uh, a lot of activities which are used in the DevOps world, um, CICD, auto-scaling, auto-clustering, and so on. VAP can be available on your own data center. Uh, it can create a private cloud. It can operate in the uh, public cloud space. It can operate in this hybrid and multi-cloud uh, architecture that we are you know, talking about. The software itself, because we provide the software, it can run on any bare metal, any infrastructure as a service platform, including Virtuoso's own hybrid server and hybrid infrastructure. We have our own IS platforms as well, but it can also run across a number of hyperscalers, a number of the, uh, the, you know, the unicorns or the service, uh, other service providers. But this is a platform gives us the ability to focus on ease of management relative to applications and database services, which we're going to come on to. Now, we have pre-configured or templatized, if you will, a number of database environments within Virtuoso application platform to make it super easy for organizations to deploy and manage said database systems. 
you can see uh, the icons here on the screen, MariaDB, PostgreSQL, MySQL, Redis, Kona, Cachebase, and uh, MongoDB. So we've encapsulated um, a lot of the, if you will, the structures that underpin the database deployments, um, built them into our VAP uh, platform to really support ease of operation and ease of deployments. And I'm going to show you this in a short while. But first of all, there's a table here which um, has been produced just to show, and it says by popularity, okay, or a popularity ranking from DB Engines. Its report was published very recently, and it gives us a, um, a top 10, if you will, database ranking. Now, um, the ones we've highlighted here, MySQL, Postgres, these are the ones that I mentioned on the previous screen. So these are the ones that we have a particular focus on. Uh, because we've, we've templatized these, we've got a lot of experience and a lot of engineering work in the back end for this. So obviously other database uh, management systems are available, but these are ones we see a huge amount of interest in uh, through all of our um, you know, um, customers and partners globally. So uh, at this point, I'm just going to pause, breath, yeah. and hand over to Tatiana. So, yeah, five, five out of top 10 are already in our portfolio. That sounds great. So for us, it's important to figure out which of those databases you use, uh, maybe not only specifically those that are already available at the tools application platform, but maybe some uh, others. So we want to ask you about that. Like what kind of databases are you using currently? And uh, you can choose several if you use several for your projects. Let's see what is the use at the moment. And maybe based on your the usage of the databases, we need to consider to add some new templates and new databases to our portfolio as well. So it's also good to have your responses. Just a few seconds more because I see that people are still responding. Okay, thank you. And now I will pause the poll and show you the results so the winner so far is mysql database and mariadb is going right after that postgresql and mongodb mongodb is even overcoming postgresql so that's nice and i see that we have redis users and we have some customers who are using oracle and my in my microsoft sql so that's that's good to know that uh, we have interest in those databases as well. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah, no, very interesting. And thanks very much for that. Marie D, my, my SQL, kind of very much, very closely aligned there as well. So again, that's really interesting from my point of view as well. Um, again, th thanks again for sharing that information. Very good, very interesting. Um, I've just picked a slide here about MariaDB. Um, choose the database of your preference, but it's one of the top ones, MariaDB, MySQL. Um, anybody that's actually get involved in managing these databases, setting them up, setting up database clusters, you probably know how challenging it can be. Uh, there's nine clear steps to basically set up um, MariaDB database cluster. And, you know, we list them, we ghosted them out, but there's a picture here of the poor old, you know, database administrator. They're having to go to all of these steps. And um, you may well have um, you know, built tools to help automate part of this, script some of it, and so on. But either way, there's a finite set of activities that you have to go through. Um, what we've done with the VAP system, Virtualized Application Platform, is we've built into this the ability to um, specify how you want your database provision. So we're making this easier, making this more accessible um, to both administrators and to DBAs as well. And when I give you a quick demo, you'll sh you'll see what I mean because we've got a couple of different ways you can use the software to give you um, that basically ease of deployment. Now, there's a couple of different, um, um, if you like, topologies that we support with the database offerings uh, within uh, the virtual application platform. So we've got built-in clustering, clusterization of popular databases. And as Tatiana says, we're always, you know, keen to look at what the market is doing, what our customers are doing, you know, other additional database types that we can consider adding to the portfolio. But for the here and now, I'm just going to talk about, I mean, this one is MariaDB. We can typically uh, um, deploy these databases, other database types in one of three topologies. Primary, secondary, where you've got a primary database node, a secondary database node, 
primary primary, where both are active and both receiving rights, and then Galera replication, where we have a minimum of three nodes at the back end that offers the highest degree of availability and for you. And just coming back to some of the uh, uh, the earlier poll in terms of some of the reasons why organizations here on this webinar are looking to deploy into cloud, I think high availability was one of the key criteria there as well. So we can operate and deploy in, e in each of those. We include uh, low balancer with proxy SQL uh, with, with the MariaDB uh, type databases. And we have a number of features, scalability, also discovery, automated failover, that help ease the overall deployment and management. So all those nine steps from that, so, you know, core troubles uh, DBA, we're just making uh, his or her life hopefully just that little bit easier as well. Now, there's a couple of screen grabs here that show the UI. Uh, we believe it's intuitive. Um, there's lots of help, lots of buttons that you can go to, but I'm just gonna, probably the easiest thing is I'm just gonna hop into the, um, um, the actual demo now. I think that's gonna be easy. So just let me share my, my screen. And uh, here we go. I've already logged in because um, we go through MFA. It's very secure. And I didn't want just to uh, waste a bit of time doing that. So I'm here now at my screen. Now, I've only got one system active. And this is a MariaDB cluster. Here's one I made earlier. So just in case, you know, I've been praying to the demo gods earlier on. But I just wanted to show you the simple mechanics with this virtual application platform of how we can actually initiate database deployments. First of all, I'm going to click on this button for this view environment. Now, this um, window on the left-hand side, this is where we can build an application stack. Let's not worry about that. I'm just going to go down to my database areas over here. I'm going to click on this, and here you can see I've got MariaDB chosen. But I could do my SQL, Pacona, Postgres, etc. in terms of these these particular structured databases. Um, which which version shall I go with? Let's go with the latest, uh, 1102. We curate all of the app database versions in here. We'll take the latest ones that are issued from whomever, we'll test them, validate them, and they'll find their way into this platform as well. So within here, I've got a single database node running MariaDB. Actually, perhaps I want more than one node. Um, two, three, whatever, not a problem. Now, button here. I can hit this auto clustering button. Very interesting. If you could imagine from a DBA perspective, what you need to do to set up um, basically a three node clustered um, DB environment. You can see this icon down here. We've already added in proxy SQL. A lot of the legwork is taken um, away from you. Um, you've got full control over this, but this just automates the steps needed to build database environment. Now, if I come down to this scheme, you can see I've got primary primary method of deployment, primary secondary, and I can go for a Galera cluster as well. You can see on the screen there. So let's just go with primary secondary. And now um, there's lots of choices I can make here. I'm going to leave everything to default because we can spend a lot of time going through this and I don't want to just uh, lose, lose the concept about what we're doing. Up here, I can now specify where do I want this database to be deployed. I've got the first one is called HPE, it's, um, it's physical servers, your Packard, HPE servers. I've also got AWS here, so I can deploy an AWS, Azure, DigitalOcean, GCP, and so on. So all of a sudden I'm getting into, ah, I can now deploy this database cluster into a number of different environments. Okay, this is this is kind of interesting. I'm just going to leave this as HPE because I'm going to come back to multi-cloud deployments in a moment. I'm going to leave it as HPE. I'm going to let everything else default, and I'm just going to change the environment name here. So this is Maria DB Demo 01. Okay, hopefully, yeah, that, that's allowed. I'll hit the Create button, and the system is now going to go ahead and create a database for me. Now, I explained a few things there, but if you remember, all the steps I took, was to say how many database nodes. I didn't change any of the sizing of them. Obviously, you can get into that and which CPU and RAM is allocated and so on. Um, the system automatically added in uh, proxy SQL nodes to manage load balancing. I selected the uh, topology scheme, you know, primary, 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 secondary, Galera, and so on. Gave it a name and said go. I let the actual um, uh, the region, the target environment, default to HPE. So now that is going to create, and it's going to take a few minutes for that. So here's one I created earlier, by the way, this is MariaDB cluster one. And so I've got a couple of my, you know, the SQL databases, you know, primary, secondary, and I've got a couple of proxy SQL nodes into that as well. So I can interact with all of that and I can, you know, I can 
add, uh, provide add-ons into the database environment. So this gives us access to not just start a database uh, cluster, um, we can interact with our database nodes, we can add additional features and capabilities into them. We can add in our or SSL TLS encrypted connections, we can enforce that, we can introduce database diagnostics and so on and so forth. So it's actually a super powerful tool that we can actually use to easily develop, deploy, manage our database environments. I'll just come out of there. Now, the second area that I wanted to actually demonstrate is even easier than this. And this is where we get into the multi-cloud a little bit more. I click on Marketplace, and this is another way that you can deploy applications, database services within our Virtuoso application platform. And this is where it's a tile-based system. And we move around this Marketplace, and we can have a look at all these different, um, if you like, indexed areas on the left-hand side. And we can choose something to deploy. But if I go to Clusters, you can see here at the top, I'm going to pick on MariaDB because um, Try this one cool. Um, but we've got MariaDB multi region cluster. We've got Postgres, we've got Redis, there's others in here as well. I'll click on install. Now, this as a dialog window is a lot simpler now. Now we've got, okay, it's already chosen or selected the database version. Um, and it's come up with a couple of regions because this is a multi region cluster and it allows us to deploy the nodes across three different um, environments. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take GCP out. I'm going to add in Azure. Simple as that. So HP, which is on-premise, AWS, Amazon, Azure, OBG, Microsoft Cloud. Um, and I'm going to give this a name now. Maria DB Multi Cluster. Hopefully we get a green tick. That means it's a unique name. And I'm going to hit install. Now, there's a lot of work to deploy this in the background, and it will take a number of minutes, but I just wanted you to show you the mechanics of doing this. So I hit install, and now the package is being installed. Please wait. I can minimize all of this. I can take this out of the way. Um, oops, excuse me. In fact, finger trouble. And you can see now, in terms of the screen, I've got a lot of things being installed right now. And you can see in the tag, it's a little bit faint, so you might not be able to see it so clearly, but we've got, an, uh, that's an Azure, that's HPE, that's AWS, little tags. So this is gonna take a, a while, but the point of me showing you this was that we've actually made it so easy and accessible for organizations to deploy multi-region, multi-cloud database clusters. Okay, this is just a snapshot, and anybody interested in this, I'm sure you're gonna have you know, 101 questions, but, um, I'm going to go back to the presentation now. And again, please have your questions ready. We've got a Q&A session later on. This will take, uh, last time I did this, it was about 10, 15 minutes. So we're not going to wait for that. So I want to go back to the presentation. Hopefully that's given you an idea about how easy it is that we can use this tool to leverage multi-cloud operations for database deployment and subsequent management and interaction as well. So go back yeah, to the that's 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 a great demo. Just uh, just uh, five cents from my side. Uh, please, guys, don't forget about the questions. So you can go to the chat or you go to Q and A session tab. So we are waiting for your questions for sure. And also in the chat, you can find some useful links, for instance, for the documentation related to the databases that we have in the application platform. And also to the landing page where you can uh, get in touch with us and register for some free trial hosted on Virtuoso Hybrid Cloud. So feel free to test it yourself. Thank you, Paul. Go ahead. Thank you, Tatiana. Okay, so I wanted to actually take what we talked about and what we've uh, briefly seen and relate this to uh, a use case of a customer that I've been working with uh, from last year. This is a national bank. Uh, we can't say the name, but um, it's not within the UK, not within Europe. It's outside in the APAC region, uh, but it's a national bank that I've been working with. And um, they had a very specific requirement is that they were looking to develop a database as a service, private cloud for their internal customers. They have 20,000 employees. It's a, it's a large organization. 
Now, the database systems they were currently or previously familiar with, which they wanted to develop into this multi, um, into this private cloud, MariaDB, PostgreSQL, Redis, um, they operate three physically separate data centers and they needed, they asked for these database clusters to be dispersed and deployed across all three data center locations. Now, this project started last year and at that point, we were fine with um, cluster database deployments. We, you know, we got all the um, um, uh, the templates, the configurations, and so on. But then, when it went into multi-region operations, so splitting out these elements of a database cluster into different physical locations, different clouds, effectively, um, we had to get into some development work. We're very closely with the client on this one. Um, and involve them in a lot of testing, both validation and performance testing, which was quite an interesting project overall. Um, three data centers here is quite a busy diagram, so please don't, you know, there's no need to uh, worry too much about this. But the big green one in, in the center, that's a primary. They had the yellow one on the left-hand side, which was a secondary data center, and these were in the same city. And then the light blue one, a uh, failover data center, which was in a separate city. Um, one of the key things with operating this way, by the way, is all about networks. And we had to get into a lot of network uh, work, re reconfiguration. And we were actually helping advise the customer about what they would need to consider from a networking point of view as well. Now, these are three physical data centers. We refer to them as the customer does as their own separate clouds, BBT cloud, CGT cloud, SRC cloud. So on the when I was showing you the demo of the platform, we've got HPE as a target environment, if you remember, AWS, Azure, DigitalOcean, GCP, and so on, all different clouds. To us, these are just environments that we can actually deploy these particular database systems onto. So think of it, a data center, it's a region, it's a cloud. Really, it's a target environment. So as long as we're you know, clear on that. And we went with a multi-cloud database replication scenario such as, well, this is what we actually built for them. And actually the MariaDB one is what's been deployed in the background <laughs> on my demo system, fingers crossed. Um, so MariaDB, PostgreSQL, uh, but we operated um, basically primary, primary, secondary for MariaDB, primary, secondary, secondary. And part of this is to do with the constructs of these individual uh, DB types. And then Redis gave us quite some interesting challenges because of the way that Redis disperses its data elements. So. You can see there we've got three primaries deployed across three physically different clouds, cloud data centers, three secondaries and three secondaries um, for Redis as well. So that one was an interesting, um, an interesting uh, set of new topology deployments for us. Um, and then, sure enough, we actually completed this particular project, um, and we completed it toward the end of last year. And then this year, the client has basically decided to replicate this, and they built a separate database as a service cloud, but this time it's a public cloud. And they're actually now selling services to other customers in the finance sector in in the country where, where they operate. So this is seen as a big success and it's actually growing uh, with them as well. So three key outcomes for this particular client. Um, operational processes definitely optimized through the VAP interface. I've just shown you a little bit of that. So savings relative to those operational processes, we gave them high availability across the data centers. So we have these primary, 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 secondary, multiple locations where we've actually deployed those to give high availability. This is a bank, it's in the finance sector, they're risk averse. Everything we did was about minimizing the risk, minimizing their exposure to potential outage impact and so on. So in terms of the architectures that we built with the topology deployments, that's what we achieved. And then also part of this was increasing the skill capability of the uh, the employer's teams, uh, the bank's teams, for their own self-reliance and self-management. So we went through um, you know, a period of training and education with them as well. So it was quite um, it was quite a long-running project, really. They had the, the, the client had very tight time scales that we had to work to, but then also fitting a lot of the education and training as well. So when we handed over to the client, again, very happy, well, there would be. Um, hopefully, because they've actually gone for a second deployment to this for their public cloud service. So overall, we see that as a, a really interesting and a really positive use case with very positive outcomes for the customer. And again, high availability across data centers. I'm going to cross out the word data center, but in cloud, which is one of the key things that uh, you were telling us from the first poll we did earlier on in this webinar. So uh, hopefully we're meeting some of those points that you said are really important to you.
Now, in terms of um, um, database management options or deployment options, we've got two main areas that we can support. Um, the first one, which is on the left-hand side, is um, offering database as a service. And this is really where our partners basically run this service, deploy this service themselves. So this is database as a service through through a partner uh, uh, community. And uh, there may be some, some of our partners on there that are already doing this, looking to do this. Um, on the right hand side, we also have database platform as a service. So we we are differentiating between those two because the one on the left is when you take it just as a service. The one on the right is where you look to deploy software uh, yourselves and operate this yourselves. Um, both of which will can give the exact same end result, operating multi-cloud strategy for dispersed database deployments and management. But one, you're taking the service, one, you're doing it yourself. Um, but it's all about eliminating management pains from an infrastructural management point of view, irrespective of whether you deploy this yourself or take a service. And it gives you, um, I'm going to say, greater control, flexibility, absolutely. But it's using the tools to help your operational teams deploy, manage, redeploy, protect the database environments um, in that slightly easy way using these tools. Hopefully that all makes sense. Hopefully that um, provides a lot of interest to yourselves. Um, on that note, um, I guess we're about ready for some Q&A. Yep. Yep, that's that's great. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. That was insightful. And we have already some questions, so that's a good timing to, to go to them. Uh, so we have uh, one question about this multi-cloud uh, deployment that you were showing. Uh, the question is, a cloud is a virtual application platform region. How do you create a cloud or a region with Amazon? Okay, for us, uh, the way that we actually work across multiple multi clouds is that we actually deploy, um, if you will, a thin layer of EAP software on AWS, on Azure, on GCP. That way, we actually um, can communicate across all of those as well. So we consider AWS itself can be a region in itself, but to us, it's where we have that thin layer of VAP deployed and that becomes a region. So obviously you can have multiple of these within the, old, the whole AWS region itself, and that's a region from an AWS, AWS perspective. So what we do is we take the VAP software and we push that out into those individual cloud environments. And then that allows us that commonality of management across all those different clouds. What I didn't touch upon earlier on was the data mobility element, and it gives us the ability to migrate these environments, these databases and other application services from one cloud, from one region to another seamlessly. And that is the power of using this multi-cloud approach. Hopefully that answers the question. Yeah, and basically uh, the admin guys, like the admins of uh, the tools application platform uh, uh, deployment of the platform itself, they have their own admin panel uh, for managing, for adding new host nodes, adding new regions um, in this case. And uh, uh, as Paul mentioned, we are like infrastructure agnostic. So it doesn't matter whether you want to add a new region with uh, uh, like bare metal servers or you want to add it with uh, Amazon servers. Like, so both of these versions are possible and both of that can be done through this admin panel that we are offering for the uh, managing the platform in general. Um, hope we answered the question for that. Okay. so. One more question. Uh, how do you access the proxy SQL nodes? The received email doesn't mention how to connect the the proxy SQL nodes. Ah, right. So uh, the proxy um, the proxy SQL, we um, with every one of those deployments, you get access to the uh, what's called the PHP admin panel. So we include that with all of them. So with the email that comes out, and, and again, I'm just trying to uh, remind myself from memory. Now you get access into the admin capability for each of those. Um, perhaps, perhaps we'll just um, take that one separately, Tatiana, just on, on that individual use case. But absolutely, you can yeah, access, yeah, 
And uh, like I, I cannot say about every package how that happens, but I've just checked in my mailbox, finding trying to find the email about creation of uh, uh, database cluster. And I see that the, in this email, there are like a set of uh, credentials that you get. First one is entry point for connecting to database cluster. And this is basically this proxy uh, server. There is host name, there is username and password that you are getting. Then separately you get credentials on PHP MyAdmin uh, at the master node, and uh, then separately cluster orchestration panel um, that goes with proxy as well. Access. So you you should. Uh, and the, then extra question for this understood. How is proxy SQL used in this case? Well, prop. Uh, um... Well, the basic level proxy SQL is a load balancer that allows all ingress traffic to and from the individual database nodes. But that is, you know, if you will, standard um, standard database load load management. Um, and whenever we have sort of multiple nodes in there, obviously you need some sort of agent in there, you know, proxy SQL and so on, to actually direct traffic between them, depending on what, upon the, the, the topology uh, being deployed, you know, primary, 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 secondary, and so on. So obviously that manages all the communication down to the individual um, database nodes. So Proxy SQL is that load balancing agent that's going to front end uh, clusters where you have multiple uh, database nodes uh, itself. I don't know if that answers the question specifically, Al, um, but in terms of uh, yeah, Proxy SQL, we just use it as you would normally expect load balancing. Funnily enough, we've actually um, had a request from a customer to deploy my SQL database with load back with cluster, sorry, but without any proxy SQL at the front end um, to basically manage um, communications directly to and from. So that is something our R&D team are actually being, being working on separately. Uh, but again, Ralph, I don't know if you've got a very specific use case for that that uh, you know, we may need to follow up on. OK. Oh, great, thank you. One more question we have. For, uh, from James, whom we use the Virtual Application Platform now, and I'm excited to see you all using multiple cloud providers. But we have been recommended to use bare metal for Virtual Application Platform. Is cloud fast enough for server major infer to WAP these days? Yeah, that, that was an interesting question. And to be honest, um, I've seen that question crop up over the years, time and time again, is cloud really fast enough? Because cloud is a virtualization kind of abstraction in its own right. And if we look at the underlying infrastructure and what Amazon are using or what you can choose to use, we've got a wide variety of choice now in terms of SSDs, NVMe, basic high, high performance storage. I think that running anything on bare metal, now I come from a technology background, uh, James, running anything on bare metal, you know you're going to get the performance of the bare metal. Is it fast enough for applications or high throughput applications, whether you're running a bare metal in the cloud? The answer is yes, brackets, it depends upon what your expectations are. You can have any cloud environment set up with the fastest um, and, and maybe drives at the back end, for example, and, and you know, huge amounts of RAM. For the most cases, it will be sufficient, absolutely. Each individual case, to be honest, if you've got high performance throughput uh, considerations, they're all going to be looked at individually. But by and large, I'd say a general answer is yes, as long as you choose the right environment within the cloud provider, AWS or wherever it is, make sure you've got the highest performance um, sort of back end storage and also and enough, enough memory because it's always memory, which is a killer here as well. Yeah, and also we need to take into consideration the price behind that. And sometimes our partners, that's why we make some recommendations because uh, uh, we see uh, best cases like what our customers, what our partners are choosing based on not only performance, but based on the price, based on the locations where these uh, uh, hardware is located like and uh, stuff like that. So this is like a decision that is made not only from one uh, perspective. Okay, so got it. So make the cloud providers among uh, the bare metal options or no one solutions. Thank you for the answer. Yeah, thank you, James. Yeah, thank you for your question. Okay, so extra questions, let's see. One more question we have. Uh, the raw prepackaged database clusters, but is it possible to package some custom ones? Oh, absolutely it is, yeah. Um, and, and I just showed you a very brief, brief look 
around VAP. There's a lot of functionality in that platform. And I mentioned we have uh, templatized a number of database systems and applications, and you saw some of those in the tiles. But absolutely, if you wanted to import your own, if you've got a custom definition, custom app, whatever, um, we talk a lot with organizations that have got traditional, in their words, monolithic apps that they want to actually bring in. Yeah, absolutely, you can. Short answer is yes, <laughs> uh, but we've got a number of techniques in which you can actually import and build your own, if you will, templates, for want of a better word. So, yes. Yeah, we have specific programming scripting language that is called Cloud Scripting that is uh, used by our team internally to build these clusters and to build, in general, all the applications that we have in the marketplace. Uh, this Cloud Scripting is uh, used to uh, to set up some actions based on the events, based on the requirements to provide the resources, to automate the process of CI CD, to provide, uh, to automate the process of deployment uh, of the applications or uh, running the clusters and so on and so forth. Um, and uh, uh, this uh, tool is open. We have open documentation for that. So, so you can use this uh, uh, cloud creating documentation to do the same uh, type of uh, uh, packages and uh, they can be imported to the uh, panel to the dashboard and uh, uh, it can be used in a custom way okay uh, great any other questions so far i see no questions more so please let me know if you still need a moment to think on the questions and meanwhile you can see the qr code uh, uh, and uh, uh, you can try our product, our database solution, uh, host it with 30 days free trial. And uh, uh, one more option that uh, Paul was mentioning again, like that this database as a service enabling solution can be tested not only on the side of your tools, but also from our uh, service providers. So in the chat, you can find the link to the catalog of uh, our service providers, like certified virtual service providers who are offering those application platforms in their data centers uh, uh, locally. So you can go also directly to them and test and run production applications there as well um, with the support from these local guys. Uh, or if you're a service provider and you want to start business offering database as a service uh, to your customers, you can come to us. We can give you some demo and uh, give more details uh, on this business model in general. And you can install this platform on premise on your servers, or you can build your own multi cloud uh, setup with this platform. Okay, mm -hmm. great. I see no extra questions, so that's uh, perfect. Thank you, guys. Thank you for joining. If you're going to have any questions, drop a message to us. We will be happy to answer and to have a further conversation. See you. Thank, Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Tatiana.